Welcome to the Local Pundit. I'm Josh Anthony. This is your Wrexham reaction for Match Day 44, where Wrexham are promoted to League One back to back promotions, baby. It's been an insane day. Wrexham wins 6 0 at the Stoke against Forest Green Rovers, who are looking for the drop, but it has been an insane day. Just an absolutely insane day. Um, I'm so happy for the club. I'm so happy for everybody. Uh, it's been just one of those fantastic days that we all look for. I've never been through a promotion for other than last year. So, yeah, in, in the league. So, uh, this has been just absolutely fabulous. So, I'm really happy to see everyone in the chat already. I know it's probably late in Wrexham at this point. And I know around the world people are doing their thing. So, um, an unbelievable, absolutely unbelievable scenes today. Uh, it's something that the team wasn't expecting. The reason why I was uh, 10 minutes late, I pushed it 10 back 10 minutes late because I wanted to check out some of the interviews with Parkinson and I wanted to check out the interview uh, with Elliot Lee. I didn't even get to the one for O'Connell, uh, but uh, I, I just was watching everything. Uh, the Discord has been going off. The internet, the internet's been going crazy. Uh, X and Twitter and all that stuff. And uh, it was just a fantastic day. We had Baz and Stace on earlier. We were doing the, the after show as well. And Stace was on earlier with us. So, uh, you got unbelievable scenes. So smash a like on the video, get involved, the chat. It's a celebration time. And we uh, will be live for an hour, probably just about an hour. Uh, so that's maybe just a little under there. So just about an hour. It's about as much time I have. But uh, unbelievable back-to-back -back promotions. And uh, I want to get the Rex and Reaction uh, up tonight so we can move forward and talk about more fun stuff tomorrow because it's going to come out. So uh, get involved. Get your uh, get your um, uh, memberships as well. Become a part of the the local pundit. Be the local pundit, uh, uh, you know, and we can get involved and do that stuff. Also, too, I'm going to bring this one up first because uh, he might have to go to sleep. So, racecourse ramble. I says we're just we are just casually waiting for the son of Krypton to talk to us. Yes, sorry about that, uh, guys. You guys, that's not. I'm not going to let that one down, am I? Oh my days, not going to let that one down. If you know, you know. Get involved in the Discord, Matt. Go to bed. You got to run a race tomorrow with the misses. So. Ruby Slippers also in the house and says, exactly. Uh, it's just, shouldn't you be sleeping? Good luck tomorrow, Matt, says John. John, good to have you for a ride. Chicky Brewer is here. Uh, happy. Uh, hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Chicky Brewer. Uh, Josh, the only thing we would convince Sheldon to go to sleep was me promising you would call him to wake him up uh, if he if the live becomes epic. Well, yeah, it could happen. Chicky's in. I'm here. Ruby, how you doing? Uh, tons of fun. Uh, I, she can wiggle her ears. Absolutely. Thanks, Chicky. A lot going on here. I can't even keep up. Uh, Ivan says, we are going up. Yes, we are going up. Yeah, we're going up, my friend. Um, good to have you guys on the show today. Um, it was a fantastic show. We had over four people, 400 people on it uh, and several afterwards as well. So really, really fantastic stuff. Uh, Errol112 is here. Hey there. How you doing? Uh, he says, thanks, John. Uh, double up the town. Uh, hey, everyone. My, what Man, what a day. Absolutely. Matt Atlas here. What an absolute day. Morning, mate. Woohoo. We are going up. We are going up League One. Oh, my God. We're going up to League One. <sighs> wow. It's been it's been an absolute season. It's not over. Still two games left uh, of this spectacular spectacular season. I got to say that it's like one of the most uh, one of the most enjoyable days of of uh, me doing uh, watching football uh, and, and and doing the show has been the, probably the best day that I've seen. Other than last week when Sheldon was on, on the scenes, uh, Stace was on the scenes today uh, for, for us doing. We had we had Humphrey Kerr on. We had uh, who else was on? We had we. I, Rob McAhoney's dad was on. Moles was there. Uh, all the old legends were there. It was so well, so fantastic. But the game uh, didn't go as we had thought. We had thought it would go, like sitting back and whatever. We came out. Elliot Lee opened up the scoring, and it was and it was the it was guns blazing at that point. And we just came went going on. We just absolutely just annihilated them. And uh, it was a party atmosphere. Um, so I just listened to one of the interviews, and I wanted to get this through real quick. Which I thought was so. This is Elliot Lee interviews. Uh, Baz did report to yes, yes, yes. Baz did report. Sorry, Ruby Slippers. Yes, uh, see, you got the check here. Bad, bad interviews. Sean Frank and Harvey. Unreal. That's right. If you haven't checked that out, go to the go to the local pundit and watch the post ninety that we did. Uh, probably about forty five minutes in. Um, Forest Green might get relegated again next year. Woeful. Yeah, that's a that's a downward that's a downward spiral there too. Um, okay, so this is what I want to talk about. So Elliot Lee and I'm I'm just gonna put this not not in you know exactly what he said, but he basically said he was on the pitch. Um, and uh, he was on the pitch. And, uh, you know, he said he, he said he thought he felt something special uh, This is toward the end. Um, he said it's hard to understand what was going on in the pitch. He didn't know the scores, but he said he looked behind. He saw O'Connell and O'Connell said, O'Connell whispered him, it's like, they're both losing. 
and he saw people like coming onto this um, on the sides there. So he said he he didn't know exactly what was going on. But O'Connell, he said somehow maybe a fan told him or whatever. But he said the the the, the results are going our way. Or whatever he said, I think he said uh, uh, they're both losing. And uh, at the end of it, he's like he knew something special was happening, and all of a sudden it was bang. Uh, there you go. So O'Connell knew on the pitch. Uh, Elliot Lee didn't quite know what was going on. And in the interview with uh, with Parkinson, Parkinson had said he's like. Uh, he said he didn't know the scores either. either. He had to look over to his his uh, son George, who is part of the uh, who's part of the staff, and he said, well, "Tell me the scores." And uh, his son told him that uh, the scores, what the scores were looking at, and he said, "Wow, what a special moment!" And it's an absolutely special moment. I know. I'm going to pause right there. Parkinson gets a lot of stick and has done. I will tell you this right now: he has full control over this club, and I thought he did a, a fantastic job uh, uh, fighting through everything through the season, what we had to go through, and where we are. And I'm. I'm so proud um, of, of him and the manager, uh, the manager and the, and the staff. Uh, Parkin came on today. By the way, Parkin came, came on today too. Steve Parkin was on afterwards. I mean, I said afterwards uh, when we were, we were closing out, you don't get that kind of. There's usually a distance between you know um, us and the club and the and the, you know the absolute players and the, and the coaching staff. And um, it was it was absolutely insane. So uh, I'm really really just having a really amazing day, and I'm so proud we're all sharing this with you. Um, Matt also says Barney's goal was absolutely, uh, uh, oh, my God. Yeah, it was one for the season. I was saying he probably didn't even feel, feel it. Matt Al is still awake, man. Good to see you, brother. I hope you're well, man. Hope you're Matt Al is an absolute legend. Um, uh, TCRL Runner 1 says, what a day. So I watch the games and listen to TLB so I don't uh, so I don't drink but order the uh, celeb food. Stuffed me silly. Uh, celeb food. Ordered celeb food. What is that? Let me know what celeb food is. Stuffed me silly uh, and have to – and have to kip and have to have a kip and wake up four hours later. Uh, I'm a lightweight. Oh God, <laughs> I don't know what celeb food is, but that's it. Well then, Karen, my guy, you're always welcome here, my guy. Welsh one says, "Oh, uh, what a great day! Yeah, absolute great day." Uh, Sean interviewed Sean freaking Harvey. Yeah, he did. I'm oh, sorry, Baz interviewed Sean freaking Harvey. Yep. Uh, uh, EOC interview was the best. I did not. That's the one I did not actually get a chance to. Get get a chance to look. Uh, Walsh one says, "I feel sorry for the FGR man holding back tears in his interview." Oh man, um, Cottrell, you know you never want to see that, but um, uh, you know it's 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 part of the game, and you know we could be on the other side of that too. We have been. The club has been have ha, has been on the other side. I mean, back to back promotions is really really something special. Um, it's thirty degrees Celsius here out. It's crazy. Uh, Parkin said, so this is John. Hey, John, how you doing, brother? Uh, I got your message and good talking to you, too. Parkin said to Baz, I've never uh, been on social media, so you better save this. Oh, it's saved. All right. Oh, celebration food. I thought it was I thought it was uh, uh, celebrity food. I didn't know that. I didn't. I want to know about celebrity food. There you go. Um, you see, race course said uh, Forest Green might get rallied again next year. Yeah, we had that. Um, Cottrell came out after the full time and shook hands and congratulated every Rexon player and the staff member. Wow. Uh, Matt was on the pitch with his missus and his and his and his son. I believe uh, he's got some great videos. If you're not in the Discord, get into the Discord. I mean, everyone is in there. It was going. I mean, I think this was buzzing all day. It almost ran my phone down. Um, so absolutely. You know, next week I'm hoping. Well, it's an away game. I don't know if we're able to have someone at the match for the lives, but maybe I think maybe Stace, if she's going, we'll, we'll sort that out for her to come on to local pundit while she's there, or uh, definitely for the last game against Stockport, we'll have Stace uh, and maybe even Baz. Uh, but definitely um, have them connect, connect with us after the, after the matches. And if I'm up, you know, love to do that too. That's in two weeks' time, that is. Uh, okay. Welsh one says, I remember uh, being on the other side of the, today's result. That's why I feel so sorry for me. And you got to feel sorry. They're human beings. They're people. Absolutely. Welsh one's correct. 100% correct. Uh, Pushing to the Champions League uh, now back-to-back. -back, season five. Welcome to Rex and bring it on. Matt, from your lips. I'm telling you, from your lips. Uh, a couple of notes I want to get in here too. Of what Parkinson said. Uh, so this is the Parky interview, uh, interview afterward. Uh, by the way, 103 played, 101, 101, drawn 35, lost 27. 162, 163 played, 100, drawn 35, lost 27. That's not bad. I'm so proud of Parkinson. And uh, listen, um, people have a right to change their mind, flip flop. Uh, and I get it. Yeah, I've been, we've been harsh on Parkinson sometimes, but I got to say, um, call what you want. But uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so proud of what they did today. But uh, he said, uh, this is not quotes. These are just some of the things he said. I, I try to write them down. 
uh, I try to write it out as fast as possible. This is Parkinson said he's uh, incredibly proud. They asked him, incredibly, uh, incredibly proud, connect to being connected to, to the club. Uh, he said it's never easy to go back to back, and no, it is not easy. And when you're getting everyone's best punch, absolutely. He said he's really proud of the owners and the staff and the crew and everyone. Uh, he said everyone, every player made a contribution this year, and I could say that you can. And we'll go do a review of the season at some point. We'll. We'll go back and see how we progress and see, you know, who was playing. I, mean, I think I said it at some times, uh, who was playing good at the right times, who was, you know, and everyone's stepping up. But everyone made a, made a contribution today. Um, he said he's just really going to enjoy this moment tonight. Uh, he said he's very – they asked about himself, and he's always going to deflect, which I thought was great. Uh, and uh, he, he was very humble. I said I'm very – it's a very proud moment for myself and the staff. And he said, yeah, you know, you, uh, you pull together for the football club, and everyone was around just kind of, um, you know, focusing on what's going to do <clears throat> uh yeah hip karma hip karma says a uh, huge huge respect for uh for parkinson yeah you got to give him respect a record speaks for itself record speaks for itself i don't hoofball i don't care but you know whatever you want to do i don't care the guy speaks for itself i think the club uh and what we did today um and what you did the last last month i would say um i think we focused on it and we moved and we moved uh we moved up yeah they asked them a little bit more uh, parkinson said the spirit and mentality to produce two best performances from uh t- from the team and the staff uh, as we move to the last parts of the season yeah i thought th- i said the colchester match uh, which i'm calling the uh the the hasselhoff match uh i thought uh, was the, was the turning point and winning winning the last couple of games and the style that we did it putting six past them today after it was a one one draw um, you know, they also said uh, in the interviews, they said that they learned from the last time from Forest Green and they're trying to implement that. So um, in this match and learn from it, I thought it was very, very impressed. And it was such I've never seen any. I mean, we watched last year going up. I've never seen anything like that today. This was not expected, you know, absolutely not expected. It was one of those. It could happen today. You know, uh, it could happen today. And 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 it did. Uh, he goes on to say uh, he said we stuck to what we need to do against Crawley. And, and even today, uh, he said it was an emphatic win. Uh, he asked, uh, Phil said it's promotion promotion. It's hard. Uh, everyone wanted to beat us this season. Teams can't have had the extra, me- uh, extra edge and he's immensely proud of, of the club and the team. He said, I came into tonight, not expecting the results to be in our favor. He said, uh, his mind was on the crew game. Uh, Parkinson said his mind was actually on the crew game for next week. Uh, which so that was, uh, uh, he said that was the game that he thought they were going to go up. So he wasn't expecting it to happen today. So that's his mindset. His mentality was like, let's just go get these three points today. But, you know, having the results go the way they did today, um, you know, it's it's just like you know, he wasn't expecting it. It's cool. Uh, it's cool to hear him say that and be honest about it, which you, know, you would expect from him. He said the results came in our favor. Uh, he said his mind, his mind was on crew. Uh, he said the crowd, he said, he said the crowd he thought had different senses. He looked at it. He looked at the crowd. He said at one point, he said he, it looked like it was a good day for him. So he didn't check the results. Um, and this is when he said uh, he asked his son, George, what the results were or and he, he said he gave him the rundown uh, and he said he gave me the scores and it was a great moment at that time. And I think that's probably toward uh, probably um, in the last, you know, the extra time there. So that was kind of cool. Uh, he said, you need good people to win with you. We were very fortunate, great people, great characters with me. He said, it's a pleasure to work with all these people. They asked him about Barnett's goal. He said Barnett had a great goal. Um, you know, he said he's pleased for Ryan and Rob uh, and getting, uh, sorry, for Ryan getting to those positions. They, so as you can notice, like he put one off his face last week or on Tuesday, he put one in today, which was the sweetest goal, one of the sweetest goals of the season between him and Andy Cannonball run. Uh, you know, they, um, you know, those are two, those are two goals of the season right there. Those are two goals of the season. Um, and and a fantastic, fantastic goal. But they're telling Ryan Barnett to get up a little bit further. And I can see that, you know, Ryan did get up a lot further. And, you know, I can see when Bolt is in the side, I can see the Bolt getting in there and um, getting goals like that, too, because Bolt has that in him, too. John says, uh, agree on Parkey. He built the squad from the ground up, aside from Davies, Bickers, Young, and Max. Yeah, uh, you know, you got to give it up. And John has always been a Parkey guy, so we got to give John his flowers. He's got just having his flowers. I love it. And he's right. He's right. He's absolutely right. Uh, Vincente is a member, of a local pundit member. If you're not a member, get involved. Be a member. Support the, support the channel. We had a banner day. Smash a like. All the fun stuff. But, yeah, uh, lots of good stuff happening today. Just now checking in, and I missed the promotion content. Go Reds. Yes. Vincente, you went to lunch, my guy. Uh, there's uh, We did the after 90s. In fact, uh, on our channel, or on the local pundit, uh, we, we stayed on for about another 50 minutes, and we had Stace on, and she was talking to people. And then afterwards – we like a cross. We do our crossover stream with uh, 
with Red Horde and uh, Vass was up doing interviews, and it was a fantastic, uh, fantastic thing. Um, it was absolutely fantastic. Arthur might be tempted to sign. Yeah, I hope so. Um, uh, TCR Runner says, "Yep, I've been, I've hated all the Parky stuff. Uh, he employed, he was employed to do one thing. He gave Rexham what they wanted. Hands off, Parky. Yep, he'll be here, and absolutely, and that's, there's, I have no problem with that. Um, I do not, uh, no problem with that. Today is a day of celebration and fun. Uh, Welsh one says, "We'll have." We'll have to do uh, more than one string. Uh, we'll have we'll have to have more than one string uh, to in our bowl next season. League One teams will destroy us. Otherwise, no. I think we're going to do. There's going to be a lot of change. We're going to go through that. We'll be live every day this summer, hopefully, and we'll be going through it uh, just like we are now. We have a lot of stuff, a lot of content to do, a lot of a lot of talking to do, a lot of analyzing to do. So don't worry about that, Walsh one. We're gonna we're gonna get through that all season, don't, all, all summer. That is that is. Um, uh, expected uh absolutely mental Rexham right now no one sleeps and i absolutely no looks like no one's sleeping hey oracle how you doing brother uh okay let me get back to this parky stuff here um clear out some of this stuff here so i'm just trying to create space actually i don't need that up anymore there we go i almost closed the stream down i almost closed the stream down i'm glad i did not uh okay so uh what else did he say uh he said barney he talked about barney's call then they asked about jack Marriott. let me stop let's talk about jack Marriott before i get actually jack he asked about jack Marriott. Uh, they said it was a great moment for him. Uh, you, you know, it came for him. I like said he's been working really hard. Uh, he said the lads were delighted for him, and uh, it wrecked some, you know, wrecked some supporters, and the team were really behind him. And you know, he went in there, and it was such a striker's goal. And I'm so proud of him. That night kind of put the cherry on top today uh, for him to score the six. I know we wanted the seven, but you know, you could everything else worked. No one got touch wood. No one got injured, and I feel bad for Mendy. He's on crutches. I, I it sounds like he's gonna from from what's. You know, I don't want to call that, but it looks like he's got that surgery. He's on crutches. I thought I was his. I thought it was his hamstring. It looks like his knee. Maybe it's an ACL. I don't know. I can't speculate. That's something for another day. But uh, uh, you know, uh, Jack Merrick getting his first goal and watching the team go over to him and doing the um, amazing. And then you know, and all the floodgates opened and everyone came on the pitch after that. Uh, fantastic stuff. Fantastic stuff. Elliot Lee interview too. I wanted to get to too. Uh, but since says, yeah, JM finally scored, uh, need, uh, need to see the replays. I haven't watched the replays yet and I, I they're not up, uh, they're not up, but, uh, I will definitely be watching them too, uh, at some point, uh, for tomorrow's show. I've already said Marriott will do well here. Uh, he's, he's far from Billy Waters. Yeah. He just hasn't had his shot, you know, and he'll be fine for next year. Uh, Elliot, uh, again, this is his interview afterwards. Incredible. He said, um, he said, it's always been his aim. He said, it's an incredible feeling. That's why he came here. He said he signed a three-year contract and he wanted to play in league one. And that's what he wanted to do. And he, he, he succeeded in that goal. We're going to play, he's going to be playing in league one next year. So he can talk to his, his, his old man about that, uh, and compare and compare notes. Let me have a sip of, um, uh, whatever I'm, water. No, it's not water. There we go. It is a celebration, right? Uh, he said he, um, he said his old goal was to, um, he knew he wanted to do it and get the league one when he joined the club. He said, uh, he said, we said, this is why we play the game, high pressure games, uh, why we play football. These are the moments why we play football, joy on Wrexham and the fans supporting us around the world. Us. Yeah. He was on, uh, the pundit last week. Um, briefly, he said, he bottled it up and amazing stuff. He said, enjoy the moment. It's a very, very special feeling. He said it was hard on the pitch, and this is when he was talking about he didn't know what was going on until O'Connell told him the, the results. So um, he said when a fan must have told him, uh, he but he saw the fan coming around the pitch, like I mentioned earlier. Um, so, you know, uh, he said at the club this week, no one talked about getting promoted. He's like uh, the manager and the coaching staff, staff just said they didn't talk about it this week, uh, a week uh, and it's prepared for the task uh, and, and the rest took care of itself. And I think that's what I said. We got to finish our dinner, work, work on what we're doing. Everything else will take care of ourselves. And I think we said that out throughout the week. Uh, I said, I'm no, I'm not omniscient. I just, you know, I, I just maybe had my own opinion and I it was happened to be right. I'll be wrong a million other times, but I just felt we could go and do our business. We'll be fine. I don't care what else happens. Uh, I know I've said it. And several other people have come on, have said it too. Uh, what else did he say? He gave credit to the owners uh, and the manager and all the coaching, uh, coaching staff. Uh, he said, uh, you know, it's it's the best changing room he's ever been in. This is Elliot Lee. And again, they're not quotes. They're just my pullouts when I, I take my notes, which is why I was late. He said, um, high pressure game. Excuse me. High pressure games. Yes, we can handle it. He said, uh, um, they felt really calm. He said he can't speak enough about the staff. He's like, there were highs and lows throughout the season. And that is so epic. Like, this was just, you know, 
I'm uh, like that. Uh, and then McElhoney uh, tweeted, they said, uh, he, McElhoney, somebody said, like, oh, we wish you were there. And he said, oh, it's killing me, you know. And it's killing all of us. But we had the luxury of having people there. We had Stace and Baz there uh, and Sheldon last week. We had the luxury to do that. And that is so awesome. And um, it was so cool to see. And, you know, it, it hurts. Us. And Matt Al was there, too, by the way. Matt Al was also there. Um, let's see here. Uh, credit to the owners. Pressure high. Uh, today we knew what we had to do, he has said. is unfortunate enough. Um, he said he was unfortunate, fortunate enough to poke one at the back stick. Uh, to get it started. And uh, he said at halftime, he said they didn't want to stop, which is great. I'm happy I heard this from him. Uh, we didn't want to stop. He said we wanted to get four, five, and six. And they did. Um, he, said, he said that's why we're all here. Uh, and we have the ambition of the club and testament to ourselves. We're only going one way. We're going to be in League One. Uh, so far from the National League a year ago, he said it feels like so far from last year. And it does. I remember sitting here with Sadly, my, my cat, um, Salem, passed away, who I started watching this with. But I remember sitting here with Salem and watching the games last year. Uh, I miss him, but uh, I remember sitting here with Salem, and uh, we were watching the games in the morning. And a year later, here we are. Here we are. So, uh, yeah, um, f fun stuff. And it does feel like a long time ago. And uh, I'm so, so proud to be a part of it and a proud of it with you all. Um, and it's made it very, very special. There's a, there's a very special community growing here, um, one day at a time. And um, happy, I'm happy we all got to share uh, together too. And Sheldon was on, and Ivan was on earlier, and Mike was on for that as well. So and stay. So it was fantastic. So he said, uh, "What else?" He's like, uh, he said he's going to enjoy the summer, and then next year we're going to give it our best shot playing in League One. Uh, and that is, you know, what else can you say? Uh, what else can you say? Um, uh, Matt Al says the football gods aligned to the planets and thus it was done. Say it now. Uh, oh God. Welsh one says I've been drinking since 5 a.m. It's 11 a.m. now. I can't not celebrate. Welsh one, you earned it, my guy. You earned it. Okay. I've been on for 20 minutes babbling like an idiot. Um, but there's a lot we can analyze. Um, I didn't even see the other scores today. I didn't even care. But I did care. I cared about the ones you want. But before I open it up, so I've been on for 20 minutes. I can do maybe another 25 minutes because uh, I, I, you know, we'll see what happens. But I wanted to get the reaction reaction. And I will open this up in a second. And if anyone is out there wants to have their say, please come on and have their say. Let's. But I really want to get to. Um, I want to see what happened today. Uh, I'm going to run through the scores today, real quick. Run through the scores today. By the way. Uh, uh, yeah, subs. Yeah. Okay. So Newport, sorry, uh, Alex, the Oracle, I'm going to put this down. Sorry. Cause I know you're going to be upset when I say this, uh, uh, Tranmere beat Newport 2-1, uh, Stockport beat Morecambe 2 nil. Bradford city beat Salford city 2-1 crew. Alexander lost three nil to Grimsby town barrel red card down to 10 men. Gillingham smacked him. Oh, God damn it. I love that here and that he smacked him three nil. That was one of them we needed to take Colchester. Uh, uh, with a red card. 3-2 beat Crawley Town. Swindon, 3-2 against Wimbledon. Uh, Sutton and Harrogate drew. Wrexham, 6-0 against Forest Green Rovers. Uh, Knotts County, 1-3-1. Walsall against Walsall. Doncaster, 4. Accrington, Stanley, nil, And Mansfield, 4. MK Dons, uh, 1. Uh, which helped us. i got to put the air on in the house. It's hot as balls in here right now. Hold on one second. Uh, one second, one second, one second. It's so hot in this, in this room here. I got the... I got the I got the uh, lights on. By the way, okay, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Not going to be a three-hour show. Uh, Producer Dan will kill me. Absolutely kill me. She's leaving tomorrow to go to... Um, she's leaving tomorrow to go to uh, Columbia. Ivan's going to come in and have his say. What up, homie? What's Hold up? On. How are you? Good, good. Well, uh, hello, everybody from beautiful... Queenstown, New Zealand. Uh, super happy. Congratulations. Uh -huh. uh, I haven't been drinking today yet because I got to drive. But yeah, just celebrating uh, and spending some time outside. Awesome, man. Show us that beautiful space. Yeah, you. so that's the uh, that's my town. Queenstown, just on the shores of the Lake Wakatipu. Uh, that's where we are lucky enough to live in the world. And today is a beautiful day. It's fall time here, so it's nice and nice and chill. But it's gonna be it's gonna it's gonna be warmer as the day progresses. So yeah, I love it, man. I love it. Uh, uh, yeah, but, uh, um, Ivan did yeoman's work today. Woke up at stupid o'clock. So, <laughs> yeah. and, and I've been up since then, man. Yeah, zero one 
three zero wake up and yeah, up and at it, it's super happy, just buzzing. What a game. Uh so so proud of uh of all the players and everybody involved and thank you so much for uh for you guys for your support and yeah it's been awesome. Uh bring on the uh bring on the next season. Yeah, the bring on the next season. The, the, the swans and the ducks are cracking there. Um, yeah, they're going, they're going mental. Yeah, we'll get to an analyzation at some point. Uh, but it's good to have you. By the way, uh, Josh, if you ain't got a Wrexham uh, for a first league one game, you should go get your arse to uh, New Zealand to watch it with uh, with me and Ivan. I would love to. I would absolutely love to. Um, we have a little. Well, you know that we have a little project happening in the background. So maybe we'll uh, we'll do something special with the local pundit setup later on. I yeah, I have something cooking. Do I, I don't even know about this. Do I not know? Well, about I told. Yeah, yeah. I I told you. Oh my god! It might just happen. That's all right. Yeah, yeah. I know you're just too happy. No, I, I'm. Yeah, too happy. You got your dog with you, yeah? Yeah, there he is. There he is, little man. Uh, out little brute. Little brute. Love it. Uh, Ruby Slipper says, uh, uh, "Oh my god, that's gorgeous." Uh, Ruby Slippers was always comes from your seats. Ruby Slippers, what did? Mark Griffith, uh, say, uh, your tw tell us your tweet, he said. We haven't said it yet. Um, uh, Josh, uh, Wilson won't, won't kill you, home improvement. <laughs> no, you won't. Beautiful Ivan says, Vincente. Remember Vincente said he's going to score and go to and go to London. He missed all of our afters, what we were doing. <laughs> yeah, no, that's all right. He will, uh, he will catch up. Yeah. Weather looks good. It looks rough, says Kim. Ruby Slipper says, promotion day. Let's have some first-timers on, too. Yeah, first-timers, hop on there. Get in here, uh, you know. Uh, support everybody. Uh, obviously, you can see the badges are up there. Those badges should be local pundit badges. Uh, I'm not sure why. Uh, Josh, celebration brain, uh, steaks, and BBQ. Yeah, what time is it there for you, by the way? Uh, it is 11.05. 11.05. What's your dog's yep. name? Bruce. Bruce, his name is. Uh, oh, okay. Bruce. Yeah, like Bruce. Bruce. Like, like, like Bruce Willis. Oh, <laughs> Bruce Willis. Oh, poor Bruce Willis. Um, I did. You were very busy. Well, can you drop it in again? You did put my headshot all over the damn internet. You and Matt. Matt, you better be asleep by now. You better be asleep by now. Um, this is a good one. I've been waiting to hear this one all day. Uh, okay. Channel Up 608, <laughs> who is a member of the local pundit. Uh, I was so drunk last night after the match. I fell asleep shortly afterwards. It's 11 a.m., so happy eating breakfast this morning. Cheers to Ivan for burying the early morning in New Zealand at game time. Absent, absent. Oh, he was sculling a can every time we score, so he picked the wrong game for that bet. Yeah. Oh, my God. Uh, as we're talking about scoring, what do you think about uh, – I who, what was your favorite goal of the day? Well, to be honest, I think uh, the the Barnett's goal was was a it's, it was a it was a masterpiece, man. That that contact, yeah. you know, on a full full sideways volley, just just amazing, spectacular. Yeah. By the way, I'm doing, I'm going to get out of here because I'm going to show. Look at look what look at that smile. Like that. <laughs> yeah, cannot be happier. To be honest, do that. Get, get that in there. Absolutely, it's awesome. Is anyone on? Is anyone near you? Where are you? What is what is all that? It looks like a nice little area. There. I am going through currently going through Queenstown Gardens, there so it's you. the uh, it's the center of Queenstown. Yes, yeah, so I went from the lake down to the uh, peninsula. So and down on that peninsula, there is a um, hundred something year old setup, which is Queenstown Gardens with the trees from all over the world, and because it's fall now. Some of the trees are changing color, and it's absolutely beautiful. Fantastic! It looks gorgeous. It looks, yeah. By the way, the signal's good too. Um, you know, H Carol and HR, we, I, we, uh, Carol and HR says, "Holy crap, it's beautiful out there." Ivan, love you all, guys. By the way, love you too, Carol. HR, I want to hug everyone today. Let's. let's yes, yes, Hunter. I love, I love you, brother. Thank you. Oh, 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 I almost lost my phone. <laughs> that's what happens when you're up at stupid o'clock watching games, celebrating. Uh, no, that's what that's what happens when your dog sees a squirrel and pulls. <laughs> By the way, I love squirrels. I think squirrels are so athletic. The only thing they like, they're just, I love squirrels. My, my friend Jill has a squirrel. Uh, John um, has says, uh, Mark mentioned Ruby a few times on air. She's a favorite of his. Well, I mean, she's a favorite of everybody's. She comes with receipts. Careful, uh, Mark Griffith. Careful, Mark Griffith. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, has just dropped uh, Rob's birthday video again. Oh, my God. 
Uh, Rob McAnally also tweeted about to Mark Griffiths. Absolutely. Uh, Vincent is asking you, did Barnes goal top the cannibal of the season? Uh, not Sir, did you ask for a goal of the season or goal, goal of the game? Goal of the game. Goal of the game. Goal of the game. Yeah, goal of the game. Definitely Barney's goal. Goal of the season. Yeah, probably Cannons. Yeah, Andy Cannonball run did it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Matt Al says, Mark reads jokes, reads my jokes out at the end of November. I asked him if it was too soon to dream. I was right. Matt Al, we can always dream. And you know what? Dream on. Yeah, I don't know if you ever seen uh, seen the end of uh, Pretty Woman. Uh, keep on dreaming. Uh, keep on going, man. Um, I, love, I by the way, Pretty Woman's a, a, a perfect ten movie. Ruby Slipper says like this. This is the tweet that she went out. I told uh, I told ask, hashtag ask Rexham that my screaming had overstimulated Bo, uh, and that I was stuck throwing a tennis ball while watching the match. Mark said he wasn't sure if Bo was a person. Well, is Bo uh, no. Uh, people asking me if I love Park Parky now. Uh, I never either loved him or hated him. And uh, somebody was saying that hands off Parky. No, no way. I'll keep my hands on anybody I want. <laughs> and if they deserve criticism, I will give them that criticism. There is no unconditional love or hate with me. Game by game, baby. I call shit shit, and I call gold gold. Always. You can you can you can trust me when I say that. Why you guys are poking the bear, poking the Ivan? <laughs> Man, what a day! Says John Hampton. Yes, uh, Ruby got so many shout outs from Mark today. Way to go, Rubes! Get in. I'm gonna, I'm gonna warn Mark Griffith. Uh, I'm trying to get him on the show. Uh, if I, if I talk to him, I tell him, careful, Ruby. She'll bring receipts. I'm just letting you know. She'll put up your, she'll put up uh, uh, pictures of you uh, as Superman. Uh, does Ivan love parking now? I've got to that one. Ryan's uh, birthday video to Rob just dropped. Yep, we just talked about that. Says Stark. Bye. Starkey, product placement, product placement. There's the fall weather. Um, Hip Karma says, Matt Al, don't poke the bear. Don't do it. Uh, shit, shit, and gold's gold. Somebody put that in the stone. Put it in one hand and the other. Um, what else did I have for you? What do you got? Uh, what do you got in your head? Uh, I know we we had a, we were on for, I was on for five hours today. We were on for five hours today. All right now, you got all. I was on five hours today. <laughs> What's wrong with me? I am just trying to find a way to make it to America for the uh, – for the summer tour, I don't think it's going to be quite possible because I do have a surgery coming up, um, spinal surgery. So, but I will, I will do my best to actually make it there because now I'm thinking that it would be great to go and see you there, and yes, see Rexham play. Um, yeah, and yeah, so that's what I'm thinking right now. As I, it's too early to start thinking about the next season yeah, because we, we don't know what kind of what what kind of players we're going to get. We don't know. Um, yeah, so because look. Uh, we can talk as much as we want about Parky and his style of football, but if we get some amazing caliber players, well, you know, look what what we did this year. Yeah, uh, you know, what? It, it, it's a full. The season is full of so many ups and downs. I said, what do you think about Parky? I don't know if you heard me babble through Parky's interview. Uh, what do you think about that? Um, what, what do you think about his interview afterwards? I thought he, you know, I know I read it to you. You could probably watch it later. But so many things he was saying. Anything? Anything jump out at you? Um, he. He looked very, very happy. He looked relieved, and uh, I think that he um, he's very grateful uh, to everyone, and uh, he's happy that the boys really, um, you know, stuck out for him and and did all the hard work. It, it, he seemed like a like a guy who was who was um, aspired. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I don't. You, you know, I think we give. You know, we 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 know that they're all going through a lot of stuff. You know, the thing is too, and I know I've said this throughout the season. They don't give out much, but we're never. I I live in L.A. You live in New Zealand, but I never felt closer to a club than I ever have. You know, I've been I've supported uh, Manchester United since 2006, which has sucked, by the way. Uh, and and we're doing this, and this is so much more gratifying and finding this. And yes, we can always never change your stripes, but I don't care. Uh, I've never had this before. He, listening to him, it's like okay, there's passion, and it might not always be this way, but we have we've had great. I feel we feel connected, and I think everyone else does too. And that's what makes it really, really, really special. I agree 100% with with you. I think that with lower league football, first of all, you didn't change your stripes. You you just got yourself some new ones. That's a yes. different thing. Uh, and um, lower league football is is a lot is a lot more real. And the connection that we feel, you never feel that in Premier League, never. And um, here, when the people are real, when the players are real, 
uh, it, it just, it just feel, feels different. And I'm, man, I'm just so grateful that I got to meet all of you guys and I got to be a part of this. And long may it can continue. It will. It absolutely will. Like Ruby said, oh, no, come tailgate with us. You're probably, your back is probably fine. He's probably, yeah, he's got surgery coming up. But, yes, we are going to be having a tailgate party. I look upon the tailgate party before the match uh, up, up north. So if you guys are going to go to the uh, Chelsea-Wrexham uh, game up north, we are doing a, a look upon a tailgate party. Absolutely. Um, who needs a back? Yeah, right, says Vincente. Mark Griffiths, do we have a major score? Yep, we're to make that happen. Um he said, I've, I've laid the foundation for the cow. Matt Owls, dude, I'm going to tell you, Matt Owls is the one that's making everything happen. He's also going to see Welsh, uh, the Welsh, uh, not Welsh one next week. He's going to see a uh, North Wales fishing guy uh, next week for the game. Uh, Welsh one says, I can flick him a message on, on Facebook. Flick is a weird word, but I get what you're saying there. Um, John Randall. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, people may complain about our manager, but you can know you can. he has built a team that he's got us where we need to be. Absolutely. I have no problems today. I don't care. It, like, I have no problem. Yeah. Yeah, let's not talk about that today. We just today is the cause for celebration, and everybody deserved it. Yeah, and um, look, uh, yeah, Matt L, absolute legend, um, in incredible, in incredible person, and um, uh, Stace, and Baz, and Sheldon, and uh, and Welsh, and Carol, and everybody else, and Ruby, uh, guys. I I'm so sorry if I'm forgetting somebody, but you've been amazing, and keep being that way. And Joshi, of course, you man. It's uh, it's amazing. Honestly, what you're doing is is mind blowing. And thank you, thank you for letting me uh, jump on that band bandwagon. And uh, if I can help you in any other meaningful way, you just let me know. Don't be shy. I'm here for you. Yeah, th th that that's a that's my guy Ivan right there. Yeah, we uh, I love you guys. And Ivan, it's so good to meet everybody too. Ivan's uh, Ivan's one of the good ones. I'll just I'll just say that you know. Uh, and uh, I'm so proud we got to do this today. This will long live this. We can we, we we'll remember back. Remember when? I we're gonna say remember when? Uh, yeah. We're gonna we're gonna back yeah. on all of this. Yeah, fantastic. Stuff. Right now we're living through the uh, good old days. You know, we're let's yeah. remember that. Right yeah. now the uh, good old days are happening. Yeah. Um, all right, I, dude. Yeah, everyone. If up, by the way, up north means uh, Santa Clara. Uh, Ivan, thank you, man. Are you gonna you gonna jump or you got things to do? What's going on? I'm I, happy to stay I got a couple of going. things to do, but if you guys gonna go crazy and if the uh, if the stream is turning into a uh, full on fiesta, I'll jump in later on. I don't know. Tonight's gonna be the fiesta. It's probably tomorrow. Uh, I have to see uh, Annie off tomorrow. She's going to Columbia, so I'm away. I'm I'm by myself with Banks, the kitty, for the week. So. Uh, you know, it's going to get live, but probably not tonight. I'm going to do yep. just another couple minutes and then uh, pop out if no one wants to pop in. But that is our, uh, that is yep. uh, uh, Ivan, baby, uh, the the ultimate male. <laughs> and uh, John, yes, I did bet against us getting promoted and I paid my bet and I'm a man of my word. And it's so good to be wrong every now and then. Yes. Love it. Yeah. So, yeah, keeping it, yeah, keep it yeah. real. Yeah, keep it real. But best friends. Best, it's like uh, what's the movie? Uh, you and John. What's the movie? Uh, uh, Step Brothers. You guys, you guys would be Step Brothers. Uh, I don't know. I I don't know who's gonna be Will Ferrell. Who's gonna be Will? Oh uh, yeah. Um, who's Will Ferrell? Okay, if we're making a Step Brothers movie, who's where Will Ferrell? Oh, Ruby Slippers might uh, come in. Uh oh. Who's uh, before I let Ruby in because she's gonna she's gonna throw a spano. If we're making the um, if we're making a Step Brothers movie. Who is going to be uh, the John C. Riley character, and who's going to be the uh, the uh, uh, Will Ferrell character? I'll leave that out. I gotta, there. I gotta think about it, man. I can't give you the answer. It's a serious question. Very serious question, and he's going to be here for a while. John's right; he's going to do that. Uh oh, you got to me. Yeah, there you go. I gotta go. I will call you today. Okay. All right, brother. Go on. Go do your yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm on, I will call Ruby today because we're we uh, we need to talk. Sure. Okay. All right. Well, shit. What, I'll just <laughs> be nervous, Josh. Be all nervous. Right. Yeah. All right. I'm good to see you. No, love you all, guys. See you later. Right. Kick, kick me out, man. Kick right. me out. On that bombshell, Ivan's out. There you go. Hello. How are you? Hello. I thought How I'd read centered this, but it goes. I mean, it flips a couple different ways. So yeah, I guess you see some some furniture. Yeah, you, a little furniture, but it's all good. Furniture happens. Furniture happens. How are you? Good to see you. What a day. Yeah. What a, what a freaking day. Meals were missed. I mean, yeah. I haven't partaken of alcoholic beverage yet today, but I haven't really felt the need. There's been so much going on on so many platforms <laughs> that just feeding off of everyone's excitement and energy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, product placement, product placement. Um, 
But hey, had you heard anything about people talking about, and I don't know if this is legitimate. I don't know if it would, if it's real, I want in on it. But there has been some mention of if we're getting a new pitch, if we're. Oh, I don't know. What you, sorry, I'm kidding. I was kidding. So Go ahead. If Go we're ahead. getting the super duper new field over the summer, right? Yes, sir. Yes, what are they going to do with the old field? Are they going to chop it up? Can we all get a piece of turf? I mean, it'd be a big money maker. So if that's real and somebody knows, please make sure that whatever sign up sheet or order form, and hopefully it can cross countries and it's not some sort of restricted customs issue. Uh, I'll, I'll, tell, I'll tell you. I want know. a piece of turf. I'll tell you what, no, Matt Al would, could find out like that. That's an easy one for Matt Al. Yeah, see, there's Vicente. Vicente wants turf as well. So, uh -huh. yeah, yeah, yeah. Got to mow that turf. All uh, right. So you hadn't heard anything about that one way or the other. I don't know anything. I am just a guy in Los Angeles. This is no, uh, not. I, I don't feel. I don't feel. Like, I mean, maybe not. Not anything. You know. You yeah. Know? Like Guardian. Um, you know about that now. Yeah, that's true. Uh, has Ruby locked down Santa Clara or still up in the air? I'm going out. We, we're doing a. Yeah. We're, yeah it's happening did, did. for me. Yeah. Tailgate. Look upon it. Tailgate. Tailgate is going to happen. Uh, and uh, swag will be going on. And we're having a lot of fun. Uh, Vincent, you want to search. Uh, try to get turf through customs. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah. Just say it's, just say it's used. Stick um, it in your underpants. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey, so, um, have you seen. I'm not wearing any. I'm kidding. Oh, okay. uh, God. That's, but I thought I thought Superman had to have underpants, or I guess they're outer pants. They're out. I think they're outer pants. I think they're outer pants. Right. You know, okay. I didn't, if you're yeah. a method actor, I guess you could tell us. Oh, um, the method to the madness. I'm gonna so, give you the. Hold on, I'm gonna give you the channels because I'm gonna um, get some wine. And uh, really, I've got yeah. some too. Are we gonna uh, do this? I, well, I'm gonna go. You go get yours. Home. You go get yours. I'll wait. No, you're going to hold the channel down. You're going to hold the channel down. There you go. I know. You get yours. Okay. You'll come back, presumably. Yes. And I will go get mine while you hold your own channel down. And then we'll both drink on the internet, which sounds like such a great idea. Allegedly. What regret to come of that? I'm going to get more water. I'll be back. Oh, are you just getting water? Okay, fine. Then I'm okay. Well, if anybody else, I'm going to look here at the little feed, hasn't heard, there are some pretty epic um, James McLean Instagram posts and vids or reels. So you might want to go check those out. If you hadn't seen EOC's interview after the game, that was my favorite of the three between Lee and Parky and EOC. There was just something about it that was so, I guess, grounded. He seemed so confident in the guidance and the leadership of Parky and the rest of the team. It just made me feel super confident about the future and league ones. So let me take a look over here since I can't see the chat with Josh gone. I'll look at my other screen. What's the T on this new stadium? I don't know, but hopefully somebody will jump on and talk to us about it. We obviously know about the extension for the temporary cop to 18 months as opposed to 12. So they're not going to be building it next season. So we still have those 2,400 or so seats available for people coming in for games next season. Josh's headshot makes it a cheese and wine party. <laughs> oh my goodness, Al. Um, that pitch is- I heard my name. I don't think it will go. So what, what, what is Al, you think, Al thinks the pitch isn't going to be like cut up and cannibalized and sold to the highest bidder. Well, I mean, but DeAndre says, girl, sorry. Yeah, she's going to give me some grass. Uh, uh, grass from the pitch. Grass from mm -hmm. the pitch. Uh, quick question to you. We didn't get to talk. What was your favorite? What, tell us, walk us through your watching the game uh, afterwards, uh, seeing Stace and Baz and everything. And our, you know, what that you was working? just incredible having. I mean, of course, Sheldon led the way um, with the previous game, but I cannot believe. And I mean, Baz <clears throat> has got to be over the freaking moon yeah. forever with some of the interviews he was able to to obtain. Yeah. And of course, with Stace, you know, her access and and personal relationships with so many personalities. Um, you Stace. know, it just can't be replicated. Stace could be an integral part to the local pundit. Well, I'm sure she could be. 
I mean, especially if you pay enough for her to be able to leave HR. I will, I will sort it out. Get on that. Yeah. That's what you have this summer for. I, that's what the summer's for. That's what the what, summer's what for. What about you? What was your, I mean, cause there was a lot, there was game time. There was a uh, ceremony time. There was Paul Mullen limping and stretching out his hammy and glute after like, that was the most worrying thing I saw today. Uh, arrest that boy. Start JM. Uh, oh, two things for me. Uh, I, that, I've, I, I, I watched last year watching this go up from, from the national league. Okay. I've never, I mean, I experienced that last year. I've never experienced that before. I mean, just having, just feeling so a part of something, but be so far away. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. You know yes. what I mean? I know exactly what you mean. Yes. Yeah. And it just felt really special. And listen, uh, I, like the conversations and everyone just kind of, feel, it kind of feels like a really big family. Um, I and agree. I, and I think, I, I mean this in a positive way. It's not, it's not, we need to enjoy the special moments. Like of in course. This, being such, so like, it might not always be like this, you of know, in, in a way where like, Life could, happens. you know, it happens. And for me, it was, um, it was when they rushed the pitch and everyone kind of actually right before it. And everyone's like, kind of like closing in on the pitch. <laughs> like the walls are closing in. Right. I got that, it. Uh, and then hearing Parkinson ask his, uh, and in the afters, him ask his son, Hey, Oh, what's the mm -hmm. scores? And then Elliot not knowing what's going on. And he asked uh, O'Connell and then uh, JM getting his stole uh, Humphrey uh, in his suit and looking into and saying, Oh, you know, he know, you remember, he remembers the look upon it. And then Rob's dad. Mac yeah. Humphrey. That was amazing. I mean, yeah. I think you're right. I think most of us, you know, sure we're varying ages, but we're all pretty much adults most of the time. Um, and we've been through enough life to recognize oh. that good things don't always last. If it's friendships and let's say work takes you someplace else, you know, your access, your time, families grow, you know. So I, I think that even though we have newer fans, even compared to the veteran fans who've, who've been through that, they've told us the stories. We've listened to them. So even though we're newer, I don't think it's hard for us to appreciate the context. Obviously, we didn't live it. But to the maximum that we can really absorb these moments, because it may be that we're having our glory days at the beginning of our relationship with this team. Um Obviously, we know it's going to even out in League One and be closer to, you know, what true football is supposed to be, according to a lot of people. So, you know, not always being at the top of the table, not always winning every match. We're going to have some new faces, all of that stuff. But I, I agree with you. I think there's a tremendous connectivity. I attribute all of that. Sure, the introduction was the documentary, but all of that connectivity for me is because of the people of Wrexham. If it's Mark with Ask, Ask Rexham on uh, Twitter, if it's Stace outside of uh, the player's entrance, if it's Matt on you know a, a Twitter space or Baz, like all of these people have welcomed new fans or returning fans even yeah. who moved away and maybe weren't as connected and had a tougher time when most of this wasn't available on feed. If you were, you know, a Wrexham fan that had lived there and let's say you moved to China, you couldn't just get a feed every Saturday like we do here in the States. So mm -hmm. I attribute that sense of community, that sense of family, which is a word I have been using as well, at least in my own head at the risk of offending anyone by letting them feel that I would be their relative. It, it all comes from that town, from that community. And I think that the best way for us to respect it and honor it is to pass that forward. So as we become, I don't know, middle-aged fans, I don't know when we stop being new, but uh, as, as newer fans than us come on, I think it's our responsibility to continue that ethos of inclusion and mentoring as we learn more to be able to pass that along to the next people uh, so that they're able to enjoy it for whatever it is that Wrexham and football, you know, fill in their lives. Okay. I don't know if I'm going to get dinged for this. And um, I agree with everything you just said. If you have, if you're questioning, if you might get dinged for it, there's the answer is prob the answer is yes. So, by the way, Baz interview Humphrey and Sean, Rob's dad, getting it booted from Malt. No, he did get booted. No, no, Malt. Stop that with Malt. Like, okay. Get out. When I get. tell 
<laughs> when I told Nia, because understandably, you know, his wife was um, had some plans, which he had already known about, because that's how she made the plans, was he was going to come home. So I had told her, okay, okay, he's leaving. But then, of course, he lingered for these epic opportunities of interviews, right? Understandably, because you got the call of the correspondent, right? You know, he had home run in his eyes. So I had to follow up with him and be like, look, okay, I thought he was leaving, but he's talking to Rob McElhinney's dad. Yeah. And then, holy shit, he's, he's, talk, he's talking to Paul. And then when Paul told him <laughs> to buzz off, Paul, Mullen's like, get out. He's get, like, get that phone <laughs> away. And like, when you think of all the stuff he's probably been subjected to, and I, kudos to Baz for takes the immediate hint, no big deal, walks his ass on out. But being able to tell Nia that, I can guarantee you de-escalated the situation when he got home. Because, you know, that that little bit of justice for her, in addition to the crowdfunded doghouse, is going yeah. to go far. He made about six bucks tonight. Okay, here's my question to you. Um, I'm, I'm, I have Ryan Reynolds' uh, Twitter feed up to bring up the uh, – no, we're getting – Oh, stuff. the video? I haven't seen it yet. I Have haven't seen... either. Do you think we'll get dinged? Oh, I d- – what? Why? Because it's if it's is it on YouTube? No, it's on X. Well, Sean isn't here to give us the legal guidance. I mean, I don't see why. It's a sharing platform if you want to credit it as having been like, yeah, I don't see how long is it? I don't a minute. Yeah, that doesn't seem bad. I mean Hold on. Happens to be the what? day. Hold on. The top. As some of you may know, today is April 14th, the birthday of my beloved co-chairman, Mr. Rob McElhenney. It also happens to be the day the Titanic went down. So for his big day this year, I financed an expedition to the ocean floor to retrieve a few bottles of Wrexham lager, which was actually on that that maiden voyage to use in an epic birthday toast. We searched and searched, and while unfortunately we didn't find any drinkable Wrexham lager, what we did find was even more beautiful. Fat back. <laughs> with the heart. With the heart. So join oh me ah. celebrating the heart of our Wrexham AFC family by sending Rob all the birthday love we can. But please don't embarrass him by going to vistaprint.com slash Wrexham to purchase, gift, and share items customized in all of Rob's splendor and soft, delicate chest hair. And don't put it all over social media. Nor should you visit the Teapot Gallery in Wrexham, where this picture will actually hang among genuine works of art. No, just do as I am. Simply wish Rob a happy birthday. We'll see you in League One. Back, honey. Sorry, Mike Reynolds is your king for Mint Mobile. Oh my God! Oh my God! Oh my God! Wait, didn't Sheldon make? Was it Sheldon the subject or the artist? Because there was a a lined paper sketch. It was supposed to go up for auction, and I thought it was Sheldon posing, but maybe it was someone else. Do you not remember this? All right, make sure you ask Sheldon about it, because there is, uh, from another podcast, a reclining. Draw me like one oh, of yeah, these. Oh yeah, yeah, uh, two beards. Uh, two two beards. Yeah, he's like that. Yeah, yeah. Was that okay? Two beards. Okay, okay. Because I know it exists. Because I was like, where do I put in a bid for it? That's going to be even hotter now with this. With this, oh, yeah. yeah. I hope they haven't sold it yet because they'll get mega bucks. That was oh, outstanding. <laughs> um, uh, I'll tell you, Ryan Reynolds is uh, his company, uh, Maximum Effort, which is something mm-hmm. called, uh, Maximum, I won't tell what other people call it. Maximum Effort, they're so good at just getting stuff out real quick. Bang. Ra- Ryan is fantastic. Rob Rob is my idol, as everyone knows, since, you know, I know, by the way, I do not know him. I think Baz was like, he knows Rob. I do not know Rob. I do not never met him. I have to put that I do not, but I love him. He's my idol. If I meet him, I will gush like a like a like a child. But anyways, that is fantastic. And I love the banter. Um it's uh, the cleverness is so good. So uh absolutely hip commerce is priceless. Uh fantastic. This Carol. It was Sheldon from Two Beards, absolutely his hip karma. I love having hip karma back. She's great. I love it. Um tuned in just in time to see my screen filled with naked bro. <laughs> well, he had a chest there. 
you know, he's got, he had, he had chest hair, you know, well, left so. is the rest is left to imagination, but also his, his amazing bling, his jewelry. No, I just want to go back real quick to what I think it's El real uh, one twelve mentioned. I think you're right. I noticed that too. It did seem like a private conversation that Paul was maybe having and didn't want necessarily to be not just interrupted, but maybe recorded and overheard. And again, more of a reflection on he, how he's probably bombarded all the time in his life with things um and then on you know bass's attempt did you see harvey harvey was like like pull, like pulling a like a pulling a child away it's like let's go you know like by his by his arm. um what, what what i did hear what i did hear and was, then he ditched barrier phil like was telling a great story like oh wait steve yeah well he also i was he also ditched i asked baz if uh, you know i was like baz i was like stay with rob's dad i want to tell him something and he Ditch yeah, you, you weren't you weren't quick enough on that. No, let's see if and it was just yeah, if it's just you know, I mean, you know, you're just gonna have to write a letter, Josh, because that wasn't gonna happen. They were ushering him in, like the timing on that. It, it was it. You got your you got you got a peek. You got I, some footage. I need, but, we, need, we need producer Ann to get in there, and be like, what's going on? Hey, now we get, no, we just need you to get over there so that you can do it yourself, mm -hmm, and I then will. get all the questions that you want answered, hopefully. Because how could they say no to Superman? What well, did uh, the 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 Superman that didn't make, yeah the backup Superman it's backup Superman the Superman that should have been I'll give you one there is a there is a uh, well we'll talk offline um, <laughs> don't worry everyone don't worry start keeping bulging now um, I, we did get out of that that Rob will be there for a stock work game we did hear his dad say that he will be there for a stock work game okay what did I miss uh, I, well I skipped the big Al one. <laughs> Oh, uh, G man, Greg Hartley, producer of the local, uh, sorry, local pundit. He, he, Greg, you could be the producer of the local pundit someday. Uh, producer of uh, the United Stand is still up. Uh, he put uh, he put in a full shift today. Um, Greg, you want to come in? Come on in. I don't know what your day is like, but come on in. Have your say, brother. Uh, uh, I could drop the link back in. Yeah, people can come in. Uh, like I said, I was trying to be on for an hour. I will. Uh, You've got a few minutes left on that. Yeah, Clark Clint. That goal. Clark yeah, well, that goal. I can do a little bit more. I mean, you know, I mean, uh, I can do that. Uh, Matt, he sh he shot off. What he sh what does that say? Can you read that? He shot off. Left me with Rob's dad, Mister Tourette's. Got weird when I was still shaking his hand for three minutes. Jesus, <laughs> 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 Greg Hartley's in there. Off the oh my gosh! Uh, that was an epic day. We had we had good. I, all right. Uh, also, Maybe. the most important question of the day. What color was Humphrey's suit? Well, he said that it was Sam Clueworth, Sam Ma sorry, Max Clueworth, um, brown, which I thought was a, a spectacular answer. Mm -hmm. I My first choice was cognac. I liked camel, whoever came in and said camel earlier on the feed. I think that was also a good one, um, which that might have been Baz who said that one. But yeah. the official answer is Clueworth brown. I would go, I said cinnamon. You said cinnamon after I put cognac and cinnamon as the first two options of the colors but in I, the first feed. <laughs> you know. I mean, it's okay. I don't own cinnamon. I can share it with you, especially since I went with cognac. Yeah, baby. But like, you didn't come up with cinnamon just on your own. No. Uh, the power of suggestion is strong. Yeah. The dark <laughs> what did you make of... Um, what did you, if you want to, like, what did you make of um, the going into the match? Did you think we would go up today? It was probably the furthest from my mind of things going into this match. I knew it was uh, probably after the second goal, it bumped up to maybe the second or third thing on my mind. Yeah. Um, and which, of course, progressively as the game went by, as updates were coming through from the other matches, you know, it shoehorned its way to the front. Yeah. Um, I was really just more focused on I was hopeful. I was hopeful. But then I also had this anxiety because, again, I don't have that we can pull it out in the last minute confidence anymore. And I don't know when that might come back. Um, I thought obviously it wasn't needed today. I thought it was after the I thought it was after the Hasselhoff game, after the Colchester game. I thought we I thought that's when we turned the corner. 
that, that was my, that's well, my yeah point. and i mean everybody has their own perspective i mean it took a, i didn't shake that faith when we went through a rough patch yeah but for me uh whichever one it was um was it mansfield mm-hmm. oh no whichever one it was i was like oh okay i know i i don't have that reserve anymore of confidence um weird context for today uh so but that was part of my anxieties i didn't have that back of the mind you know what we've got the full 90 to make this happen which is the actual truth we do but the faith of us being able to to pull it off if we if for example um they've gotten a goal early today i mean like we, we we know what we have to be nervous about or what makes us nervous and when that didn't happen you know first goal in you know yeah. okay and no, we put the first goal in and then the second one i'm like oh we're kind of on a fucking roll yeah. and then bam 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 i just it's just raining golds like i mean i was <laughs> running out gold. of Hallelujah. <laughs> exactly right so um I, yeah i be, then it to me was pretty much i didn't care i didn't care if we went up i didn't care what the outcome of the other games were because we were performing on a level that was so satisfying not just for fans but for the players themselves they were bringing to fruition parky's vision and plan you know and again as people have said he was hired to do a thing yeah he's done that thing more than once more than and once i am a parky fan That's um i think ivan's right that It shouldn't isolate someone from um, criticism, uh, you know, valid criticism. Yeah. But, I mean, there will never be a time. It's like your first Doctor Who. Phil Parkinson will always be, like, my first Wrexham manager love, right? Like, he will always be that. I mean, I don't see him ever making a decision or betraying the club in a way that would tarnish that, you know, he might move on. We might part ways, but this time, as you were saying, as Ivan was saying, it's a golden time and I'm not going to have the memory of it or the present of going through it tarnished by worrying about what may or may not happen in the future. I mean, the man has to start. Live in the moment. Uh, Alpine Newt uh, plays games, uh, says it was dark camel going back to that thing too. Fair. DeAndre. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's a good description. I assume we would win, but I, this is DeAndre. I said, I, but I wasn't really counting on both results going right. No. And I think that's great. Mm-hmm. Matt Al saying he knew last night. He also, so what's the lottery numbers tonight, man? We just, come on, let me know. Uh, Matt Al's got it. Matt we Al. do listen to you. We do listen to you, Matt Al, but that doesn't take away our own anxieties. Yeah. Uh, Kim says the game was over after the first goal. Uh, Kim is also a member of the local pundit. She is, I think, a first teamer uh, or a, actually a local pundit. What I want to do for those for those things, I want to do local uh, local pundit, like where people are from. So local pundit, mm. are, you know, so that's the goal for like doing the uh, for the uh, subscriptions and things like that. Yeah. And we got some upgrades today. I saw a few in the earlier stream that people went from, you know, local to whatever the next one is. Uh, to a full pundit. The full a full pundit. pundit. Yeah, it's not a full, starter pundit. Got to be a full pundit. <laughs> <laughs> got to be a full pundit. Parker would never get re- regenerated. No, no, no. It's like getting. I think like, it's like Josh getting fired and bringing in Tone Costa. You know, Tone Costa knew how to get us through today. You know, Josh would might not have known how to get us through today. I don't know. Did you miss that one? You missed that one. You missed that one. Mm. Did you miss the the the, the Tone Costa stuff on the, the Discord? I've seen it referred, but I don't know what it is, which I feel really bad. Oh, about. okay. Go ahead. It's in there. Go find the Tone Costa stuff for used. You'll love it. Okay. You're missing out. We'll do. We'll do. I, I, I believe you. I, I, well, here's – oh, shoot. What did I just do? Oh, no. You're, I'm so I, you're nervous missing, to hear you say these things. You're missing out on receipt. I'm, yeah, you're gonna, yeah, it's okay. Damn it. I just screwed up. Okay. that, oh, that you, one. When you were getting I, your drink, I told everyone to check out McLean's Instagram because there's some gold on there. And um, then I just talked a bit about the EOC interview. Um, and what I liked about it, just super briefly. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. The the one that you hadn't seen. So if you get a chance, it's worth seeing that. I I liked the 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 tone. I liked. It built a lot of confidence in me for next season. He's just yeah. so present. He has so much confidence in Parky and the culture within the locker room that mm-hmm. it more than probably anything else today has made me very optimistic but really more confident because it's so steadying yeah. that you know it 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 
brought back some belief for, for me of, okay, you know, we can handle it. What expectations are realistic. And especially if he's going to be with us, you know, I, I haven't seen him speak much. So it was, it was really great to have yeah, him interviewed. That's the, that's the one interview I did not see actually, which is the only one. So uh, Greg links in the chat there, by the way, uh, hip Carmen says, Matt Al. Yes. Uh, Kim also says, uh, Parky was hired to do one thing, but if Rexing hadn't gone up, uh, questions would have been asked. That's fair. So it works. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that works. Um, Josh, do you have thoughts on whether or not Paul should go to, I mean, with his little potential hammy injury today uh, from the cheering, do you have a view of whether or not he should participate in the U.S. tour friendlies or no, some uh, people want him wrapped in bubble wrap, you know, and preserved and not have risks taken unnecessarily, uh, um, which I understand. But I um, wanted to know what your thoughts were. Uh, I uh, So Mullen is sitting the next game for me. Jay, I'm a starting. And so mm -hmm. it's probably uh, unless we can go into the final match with Stockport to win mm -hmm. the league, it's done. That's it. He's done for the season. There's no yeah, reason. To play. After that, after that, in the summer, in the states. Oh, he needs to play when we're at the when we're at the game. Yeah, for sure. Well, okay. So you're okay so long as he only plays in Santa Clara and not well, TST or anything else. No, I don't. I'm just no. looking for clarity because some people, understandably, don't want to risk him you know, being injured. But I had a little thing I wanted to, to say about that because I had a really great conversation when I was leaving Wrexham. So mm -hmm. yeah, of course we want to see him, but I just didn't know how invested you were or if anybody else had strong opinions one way or the other. So when I was being driven back to the um, airport from my trip to Wrexham, it was with um, uh, Gavin Davies shuttle service. Okay. And I had a great guy driving, uh, I think it was James or Jamie. And he was super nice. It was two in the morning, two fifteen in the morning. You know, and but, such a great guy to chat with. Oh, go ahead. No, no, I'm, saying, I'm, I'm looking down because I'm trying to give uh, I'm trying to give uh, uh, Greg the direct link so he can come up. So I'm oh, listening. Sure. Go, that's keep fine. going. That's fine. So one thing that James said to me that I really appreciated for context because we were talking about moles, and you know his fitness at that time. You know, I guess that was a month ago now. Yep. How his season had started, how it had been impacted, the what um, interviews had been given about when is the appropriate time for him with his late start to be hitting peak, you know, when that would be coming about, which has been pretty much on target. And what James said that really stuck with me was depending on how much psychological impact the trauma of the lung injury had for him, which would make sense for any athlete, because it is a bit of a contact sport, but it is rare relatively compared to let's say you know maybe rugby or other thing to have a, an injury a freak injury of that magnitude that disabling mm -hmm. and kind of like when we talked about arthur and his mask after yeah. his jaw um but what i liked about what james said was that with each level that we go up the quality of play will improve he said he believes that there will be fewer catastrophic injuries because the players are worth more. The players are better trained. Each level up you go. So there's some self-preservation from a perspective of, I don't want to be injured myself because I want to play, or there's money tied up within with you know, the players. So you don't want to come up with game plans that lend themselves to overly aggressive, high-risk injury unnecessarily. But then also that each player's technique also elevates at each level so that the slips of judgment or miscalculations, in his opinion, would become fewer and fewer as a reflection of their professionalism and their, well, really just we, we get into freaky, freaky talent, you know, the further up you go, that these are technically human beings, but, you know, yep. not like the rest of us at, at the mm -hmm. level of perfection that they're chasing and achieving. So... I have thought of that conversation many times since, and it gives me a lot of comfort because it made a lot of sense. And it is my hope that as he and I were discussing that each game that's under his belt or each season that he doesn't have that happen to him again, that it ceases to be uh, a thought in his mind when he you know goes for a player, goes after a ball. Um, when it certainly looks like he's recovered 
physically fully, you know, from the lung injury, at least. Yeah, yeah, that was just a really great conversation I had when the poor man was trapped in a car with me at 2 a.m. for an hour to drive to Manchester. And yeah, so I don't I don't know if Jamie James listens, but if you need a shuttle, I got it from the recommendation from Phoenix Wrexham, Wrexham Phoenix, the WrexhamRedDragons.com is a great website with all the chants, all the lyrics for the chants. If you're going to plan a trip, it's got a lot of resources. And I know that he's been building more on there. So feel free to check it out. But that's how I knew about the shuttle service, booked through them. And uh, yeah, great people. Very reliable. Before I like, so Ken just came up in. Uh, can you read that? Can you see that up there? Um, Asistindo directamente do Brasil. Okay, so this is going to be Portuguese instead of Spanish. Comunidade Rexham Brasil. So it's a Brazilian Rexham community. Uh, so directly, I'm assuming he's going to say he's directly from Brazil. Like, as he could be attending or watching, like, yeah, being, but uh, yeah, I don't speak Portuguese, nor do I. But, uh, uh yeah, Mario. <laughs> uh, uh, Ken's in the house. How you doing, brother? Hello, Ken. Oh, I see Ken's not messing about. Ken got actual wine, yeah, or something. Well, there you go. Welcome, welcome. Good to see you, brother. Uh, what, what a night. Yeah. Oh, what a night. What, <laughs> what were your and favorite moments? And, and wasn't the and wasn't the watch along going off? <laughs> oh, God. The watch along that never ends. <laughs> it was bonkers. Uh, I hold on. I'll readjust so you. Can, yeah, I'll hold on, I'll get it here. What did you think today, my friend? What uh, oh, what time? Was just it? you know, like our form. Just what a great time for the club. Our form was trending up, like you called it earlier. Kieran called five nil. He nearly nailed it. Um, but yeah, it's he was tired. He was tired. That's why he missed one. He was so it was four a.m. for him. Yeah, it's ten to ten in the morning. But I've just poured myself a nice whiskey in celebration. Amazing. <laughs> Soda water. There you go. And yeah, it's a uh, a big big time for the club. It's uh, you know getting into League One. What a you know great result. It's a uh, you know, I, I want to dare to dream that Stockport now have a bit of a hiccup. So right. we'll wait and see. Right. Uh, I, uh, uh, Andy says, great day today. Thanks for doing this. Looking forward to staying connected in the last two games and the over the summer. Cheers. Andy, we'll be live every day over the summer if we can do. We have a lot planned over the summer, lots of building to do. We will all be here walking through it every day. We will, we're we going to pick through the bones. So many, There's gonna be nothing left on these bones. It'll be like... All day, all summer long. Yeah, yes. Um, give us your highlights of the day, other than going up, obviously. What did you see today? What did you see? Highlights of the day. I would say seeing Palmer with his dad at the end of the match oh, on the yeah. side of the pitch. Yeah. Like that was that was pretty big because you know, I mean, we're all sort of not massive Palmer fans, but mm. clearly he works. And you know, the, all these guys put in so much time and effort. So you know, he that's great to see. He was about, he put it, we were, he wanted a goal today. Hands out, he wanted a goal. Yep. Yeah. And, right. you know, I mean, I see Oho 1000 just said, you know, League One is a totally different league. It, it is and it isn't. It's not that much of a different league. Yes, the players are better. Every league you go up, it's better. But, you know, I mean, that's, that's not really the case. These players, got to remember, all these players we bought, They've come down from Championship right. League One mm-hmm. teams. They know how to play in these leagues. Yeah. Um, so that's, you know, chat for the off-season. But last night, wow, you know, just – and the scenes that, that, that all the players – oh, Stace at the end of the at the end of the watch-along. How good. Standing. Yeah. Yeah. So. I, 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 mean, I, would, I'm, I would love to have Stace, uh, we're, you, know, you know, yeah. Stace is yeah. amazing. She's, I mean, uh, what was your highlight, Josh? My, my my highlight was watching the the crowd encroach at the end of the match for sure. Like you right know, right on I mean? the right on the baseline. Yeah, just like just I don't not, it, like impending positive doom. You know, like oh, you know, just the intensity of it, just the building of it. It's almost like you cannot that energy. And by the way, I'm going to put this out there too: the respect that they didn't go over the line. You know, because mm-hmm. there's no way. And- go, go ahead. The Forest Green had a throw-in, and the respect they showed him, they gave him a bit of space to do the throw-in. 
the match was over. It was yeah. literally, and you know, smart call by the ref to call it at five minutes as opposed to six minutes. And I saw that. Yeah, let yeah. it happen. That and uh, that and uh, you know the, the the Humphrey and then uh, Rob's dad. I thought that was really cool to see. What about our? We have we talked about the kitty tackle. No. So Maca's kids, I don't know if Tozer's kid, like the, the player's kids, while their parents were doing boring stuff like appreciating one another and absorbing the ambiance, the kids were in kits kicking around a yellow football. And mm-hmm. I mean, we had toddlers that looked like they were two years old running after, but there was somebody jump in and say whose kid it was. I thought it was one of Max. The most gorgeous tackle. Stripped the ball from the other kids he was heading towards goal from behind. They did uh-huh. it on replay. And it wasn't the only one. Then later on, let's say five, ten minutes later, they're still playing. They're grabbing each other's kits, like their shirts, to hold them back. So like, it was just beautiful. I, I had the best time watching the kids play football. Yeah. It was, it was fantastic. One of them had Daddy on his back of his shirt. Yes. Yeah. Yes, I saw that too. I, I didn't know it was, if it was a uh, – I didn't know if it was a um... – uh, what's her name? The girl that has a uh, daddy. Oh, oh, we got, we got, we got someone else coming in. G man, fantastic. Greg, Greg's coming in. What's up, my guy? Greg, what do you think of the OT? <laughs> I so love impressive. it. Very sharp. I, I love Thank it. You. That's good. Shot. How are you? Good, mate. Yeah, long day, but good. Long day for you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, we're just uh, walking through the celebrations today. I did. Um, I know you had a different result when we were on the, on the United stand uh, for United today, but yeah, <laughs> I didn't see. I had, re- I had Wrexham in my, uh, my accumulator bet today. So I had four teams. <clears throat> I had United, I had Wrexham and I had two other teams. Um, and yeah, everybody lost or drew except Wrexham. So <sighs> yeah, could have won a bet, but. Did you, did you catch any of the Wrexham highlights or anything what happened today? And, uh, and Ali? No, I was following the score. Um, obviously, I, I know you've obviously secured uh, promotion now, so congratulations to, to everybody involved and, and whatnot. So it's great. I mean, I can't wait for, what is it, the third or fourth series of uh, the Wrexham documentary, which will be good. So Yeah. We'll be doing a watch-along for the local pundit on uh, watching the show, kind of like what they do for some of the Bravo stuff. So get involved there. Maybe I'm going to try to drive producer Ann to watch it with me. I don't know. We'll see. Um, we'll see. Um so yeah, we we had a we had a full day, man. Uh, do you want to give a, a quick highlight to what you what happened to you? Uh, you know, we, uh, we're just kind of celebrating, kind of leaving it loose a little bit. What happened to you today? Uh, two two draw. Uh, you worked all day, and producer the producer of uh, the United Stand, the biggest. Uh, how do I say this? Biggest fan channel in the world, I would say, for Manchester United. Yeah, I would say. Yeah, I would say. Um, yeah, yeah if, you, if you look at obviously the numbers, subscribers, and you know how many how many views you get. Yeah, I think, I, think yeah, I would say yeah, how'd the biggest. Know? <laughs> the biggest. I don't know. Ask Mark. He's a genius. Um, I, I don't know. I, I don't know how he does it. And um, I think the content we produce is great. Obviously, all our live stuff every day is is really good. And we, I think one of the things that we we always strive for if, was innovating and staying ahead of the game. So when new things come in, we obviously we, we 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 try and stay ahead of the game. So I think obviously Mark for the past ten years has done unbelievable. And mm-hmm. um, I think only. It's probably we got the studio just before the World Cup last this was it last December? Yes, the World Cup. Um, so ju- I think just staying ahead of the game and and just creating content that's genuine. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, Mark's always genuine. You know, he has massive opinions, and whether you love it or hate it, you know, Mark will say it's stuff like anybody would say when they're in a pub. Mm-hmm. Um, and obviously. You, you've got Beth, you've got Faz, you've obviously Morgs has come in now, and I think the content we're producing is is, is great. And I just, like I said, I think we just keep after mm-hmm. staying ahead of the game. Um, but Mark's built a great platform, and I think in his head now he wants to rival TNT, he wants to ri- rival Sky Sports, he wants to turn into more of a broadcasting broadcasting company rather than just a news outlet or a fan channel. So I think that's where we're aspiring to do. Um, we've got great contacts in United now, and obviously you see with the the Hoyland interview, and obviously speaking to other people, you know some some more interviews might happen. So I think um, once the traditional media and Manchester United see that this is what most people watch and mo- most people read, I think once they're on board, I think 
this kind of space, especially you know, obviously your space and the YouTube space and the the new media we call it, um, I think it'll, we'll we'll take over in the next five years. So because people are not reading newspapers anymore, people are not reading these stories. People want news now. People want to see it, and people are watching more. And like like Mark's watch alongs. 80,000, 90,000, more than a stadium. It's crazy. Yeah. So as long as we keep staying ahead of the game, I think uh, I think it'll be, I think we'll be here for a long time well, until Mark says he's done. So well, we're, we take little bits and pieces there and you guys are doing a great job. So what we're doing today, Ken mentioned it too about us. We have, we, I don't know if you saw, you probably, I know you're working today and I'll, I'll pass to Ken and, and, and Ruby, you know, and, and Greg, uh, obviously I love having you on, man. It's so good. And we talk on the side, which is great. You know, we have for us, Ken. You know, we have an interaction that is a little bit different than what even you know what the United States does. We we are out. We, we have the players on. Like we had, we had all the players. I had the, we had the manager on last week briefly, two seconds. But like you know, that's something that I think like, you just talk beat like right to that right in there. You know, that's something we have access to that you know you guys have you know during the week sometimes. But we had right after the match, it was pretty impressive. Ken, you know, and I, what do you, what did you what do you think about that? Uh, just having that at some point, uh, hopefully, be a regular thing for us. Yeah, look, and at the moment, like we have that, it's League Two. We go to League One, and I think we'll still have that next year, which will be great. And if we can sort of um, have that build into a thing, then I don't think it will really matter when, when, when we go to Championship and Premier League. We should still get that access. So you know, and that is a fantastic thing for the fans to to actually get to see their players because and to feel that connection with their team, their players their community, you know, not just the players, like, you know, Stace off the ground, you know, um, all these other people in and around the ground. And I think there's so much more that the local pundit is going to grow into over the next two years. I think it's going to be pretty amazing. As long as I keep throwing my headshots, Ruby Slippers. Well, I mean, look, we've just got to stay away from the kryptonite. Greg, did you see the headshot? No, oh, here we go. The headshot. Why is he had some photos done? Excuse me. Excuse me. Here we go. Here we go. And Greg, did you know what he tried out for and just missed out on? What could have been? What could have been? Matt, I, I was having fine out of it. <laughs> I was a. I was an actor for ten years. It's a. a, a oh, geez, here we go. oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> I, look at that. He's got. A, he's got a good head of hair. You know what? It looks like he needs to be in Greece. <laughs> oh, good call. He, tried out, he was going to be Superman. Fucking Superman. They yep. picked the wrong guy. They should have gone with Josh. They went with Brandon Ralph. How did that go? I don't for, for understand. The, for the show or movies? Uh, the uh, movie, the Brandon Ralph, uh, the Brandon Ralph. Ups. Plus, yeah, Brandon Ralph. Yes. Yeah, long time ago. A lot younger, a lot more hair. Uh, Ruby Slippers comes with receipts, uh, 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 Greg. Uh, she's, uh, do not, just be careful. She will come with the receipt. No, it's just you. This is you. You're gonna talk shit, yeah. Josh. And like you still, the balance is not yet even. You've got a couple more, but mm. I'll wait. Well, I think I think Ruby's got a little bit up her sleeve yet. <laughs> so Never. Nervous. Never. So Sorry for it moving. Um, I had to turn on my Beyonce fan because it is 80 degrees almost. I'm just trying not to turn on the air conditioning because it's supposed to cool off tomorrow, which is about I don't know if everybody. It's about 30 C. For you guys so mm -hmm. it's a little bit high a little bit i'm high on the top of the house and it's a little bit warmer yeah so yeah if that's too loud i'll turn it off no worries and, and mute but no I you're, good. Air. I air. Yeah, you're, you're good you're good you're good yeah, uh, uh, Craig. kim says uh you see the loop model for how the team remains accessible and connected to the town you think that's uh possible for Wrexham going up to League One and what we're doing here, I mean, is it a little bit different? Luton's a little bit more. I mean, L Luton's is obviously a small town outside of London. Um, I think it has the same characteristics of Wrexham. Uh, Wrexham's a you know a, a really close knit community, um, and you see that on the, obviously the documentaries and everybody follows Wrexham if you live in Wrexham. Um, so I I, th I think they'll they'll be in a couple of years time. Not if, but when they get to Premier League, because I, I truly do think they'll get there. I think they've got the right model. Obviously, they've got owners that are very passionate and have and love what they're doing. They're not just investors that have come in and just left it to other people to run. You can truly see how invested they are. Um, I think, obviously, when you move towards the Championship and 
the Premier League, I think maybe one or two other investors will come in. I think obviously Ryan's probably laying the foundations for that now because they will need that yeah. investment. Obviously, Ryan's a multimillionaire. Um, they both are, but obviously they, they can't keep putting in their own money. They'll need sponsorship. I mean, as you keep going and get promoted, you you will get bigger sponsorships, and obviously they are using their in their American connection to get you know, shirt sponsors, match day sponsors, stuff like that. And it's great. And I think they will continue to do that and they probably will get bigger sponsors along the line. But going back to the community of Wrexham, I remember when I was at City and we always used to play Wrexham. We, we just like on a Tuesday, it'd be a friendly, but we'd always go there. But they would always, even if it was like the reserves or under 18s, they would always have loads of fans because people love the town. People love the club. Uh, and I think Ryan and... Um, I think both both of them have have pulled a team out of a bit a, a deep pit because that's probably where they were going if they didn't come in, and they've kind of revitalised the area. They've re- revitalised the fan base and the community and people who live in Wrexham, you know, to 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 come out and go and watch the team. And they probably the amount of people that go to Wrexham now just because of it, the money that they bring in, not just because of the team, but because of the tourism and and whatnot. I think everything outside the team is growing as well so it, it, it's great to see um obviously there'll be a lot of teams that that probably don't like it because obviously these two have come in and invested quite a lot of money and obviously when money's involved people you know don't like it same with city money comes in and look where yeah. they are now but to be a good team to, to get a team to where they are money does have to be involved and people when people are losing they don't like it because everybody says their budget's bigger than ours well yeah it is but in football this in this day and age money talks and if you don't have money in a club there's been a couple of teams Leicester for instance when they won the Premier League mm-hmm. they probably won't have half the budget as Manchester United that was a one-off but yeah. in this day and age there needs to be money involved but I also think the money's coming into Wrexham as well into the community into the businesses and I, th- I think everything team community town city I think it, it's going to keep flourishing and you know, hats off to the owners. They've, they've they've really they've really done their homework and really um, what's the word? They've really took it on to. It's like a rising uh, tide. It's like a rising yeah, tide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like underst- Like I think as Ryan got a house just outside of Wrexham now, and they they're, they're really involved and they they really want this to happen. Mm-hmm. So it's good to see. Um, but you still like to see many teams like the owners at Reading. Um, that's just a shambles there and you, it's just there's too many owners in, in these in these divisions all the way down to the conference all the way to the Premier League who come in just to make some money mm-hmm. um, don't want to talk about the Glazers but we can leave that for another time but um, it's great to see when owners come in <laughs> and want to do the right thing mm-hmm. and you see we see it with Salford obviously they're not doing great and people thought oh they just got money but they got a team in in the division I used, I used to play in and brought them all the way up Yes, they invested money, but they did it right. So it's it's great to see Wrexham, you know, on the trajectory. And I think I think next year, um, and I've got a question for you guys. Um, I think next year it'll be, it'll be, be a big thing because League One is probably one of the hard, hardest leagues to get out of. There's so many teams that league who have been in there for decades. But I think Wrexham can do it. So my question to you guys is, what players do we need to bring in next year to to make that make that promotion to the championship? Give it to the, give it to the other two first. Well, you know I have no business answering this and don't really have any. I come here, Greg, to learn. I come yep. with impressions, ideas, observations, but I don't necessarily have forecasting abilities. So I'm gonna I'm gonna pass this one off so I can hear somebody else's better informed opinion. Go on, Ken. Yeah. Well, look, the the structure of our team is right. It's a question of obviously. This is football, what players get let go and what players get brought in. In terms of the way our team is structured, a big a big forward striker, a fast forward striker, so Mullen Palmer, um, then you have Fletcher and these guys. But they're going to need slightly better quality players in each position. So you go, well, which players are just holding their own at the moment in this league, in our team? Um, and, you know, I mean, I'd say as terrible as it is to say, Palmer is that player. Mm-hmm. He he doesn't quite cut the mustard going up. Um, Mullen will still hold well and 
well and truly hold his own in um, League One. Then you come back to the midfield and the wing backs. Geo is definitely going to hold his own going up. Um, then Lee is definitely going to hold his own. I think Cannon will hold his own. McLean is right on the cusp. He's a smart footballer, so but he's one that you maybe might you know have to. I think he'll be there, but he'll need a support player to be subbing in and out with him on the other side. You know, Mendy is only just there. I think he's another player that, even though he's been injured and in and out, he's another player that's going to possibly be looking to be getting a better player of his style in, in my opinion. And then, you know, you go further back and you look at Stash. He's definitely good enough to be playing that defensive role on the right side. O'Connell's definitely good enough for League One to, pl- to be playing that um, general in defence at the middle of the back. And Clearworth is only 21. He's only going to improve. So he'll definitely stay. O'Conquo's good if we can keep him. So, you know, look, I think we need two to three good quality players, probably a midfield, one of each, a striker, a midfielder and a defender. That's what we need. We need three players in each of those positions going forward next year. Yeah. Uh, well, Ivan just came in too, and I want to read this one through. Tori, wow, guys, what a day. I feel emotionally exhausted. Ha ha. Such an incredible day, an incredible team, uh, a team and town, everything. Thank you guys for accepting me into this community. Tori, thank you for coming into the community. We're happy to have you, and thank you so much. Um, and it's uh, it's been a pleasure to have you in this community as well. So thank you. I guess uh, I have a quick follow up question for Greg since I'm not going to cast about with uh, player suggestions. So, um, Greg, when you were talking about um, how it's an extremely difficult uh, division to get out of, uh, extremely difficult League One, um, and people have been in there, or teams have been in there for decades. Is it still good football, though? Like, if someone does happen to be a, a team, does happen to be in League One for a number of years, is it still exciting watching? Is it still passionate? Is it still exciting? Um, I, I think, yes, it is. Um, I think that obviously the quality of football goes up because you've got teams such as like um, Portsmouth, Bolton, Derby County have all played in the Premier League and, you know, Blackburn. Um, y- oh, sorry, not Blackburn, uh, Blackpool. Um, yes. The football's still good. Obviously, every team has a different way of playing. Um, the, the only thing I would say, when it gets to, and you, you might see it now, but when it gets to the winter time and the pitch is not great, football does change. It comes, okay. it starts becoming this long ball um, football until the pitches become good long again. Um, we, we've never heard of her. <laughs> um yeah, I mean, you, you'll you'll see teams in that league who you know are happy to not get promoted, happy not to get relegated because they're happy where they are. Obviously, the bu- the budgets that they have might not allow them to um, go higher. Or I'm, I'm not saying they don't have aspirations, but they're com- let, let's say the word comfortable. They're comfortable okay. where they are because they, they have the right place for league. They have the mm-hmm. right budget for league, and some of the clubs are probably looking just to make a profit each year to mm-hmm. you know stay be sustainable um but you'll you, you will have like the big teams obviously portsmouth have gone for it this year and i think they can that they could have won the league today if they won um but teams like that they, they probably have a bigger budget and obviously when they have a big budget they've got that aspirations to push on do something with um, them yeah but like, there's an example so you'll see in the championship going to premier League, you see the same teams going up each year coming down because mm. i think maybe norwich is is an example mm-hmm. because they, they have a, bu- a great budget for the championship they know they can win it but the when they get the premier league yeah they're on the cusp where they know they can win it but if they get relegated they're not i wouldn't say they're not bothered but the they get they get like they call it a parachute payment from the the football okay. league and it's like 60 I'm million or it's, it's yeah it's okay. something ridiculous so they get this big payout for getting relegated. So the, this club like that, yeah. But I think once you get to championship, obviously the, the the level of football does go up massively, and you've got okay. you've got players who, um, who probably could play in the Premier League, but maybe not get as much money. Like and you, yeah, so you, you'll see that as well with like League Two conference, conference league teams. And even lower down in the the northern Prem, the one before the conference that I used to play in, you'll see players on five hundred pound a week, six hundred pound a week, 
but if they went higher they probably won't they, they probably would get that but if they because they stay lower they can have a, a day job which probably brings in quite a lot of money but they also get the football money and it's like it's, they get two wages but if they went to a team that's full-time they'll mm-hmm. only get one wage and probably don't make as much so you'll mm-hmm. you will see players like that so i think obviously if you guys get promoted to the championship i think it obviously let, let's not get ahead of ourselves but obviously league one's like i said one of the hardest leagues to get out of and there will be teams who have an identity and want to play good football um but then there will be teams who i just have a big strike up top long ball get it down and play off them um but yeah i, th- I think i think it'll be it'll be tough for you guys but if you bring in the right players mm-hmm. you know anything can happen um but Thank like you. if you look at yeah, yeah. If you look at like, I think what league is it? I think it's, it was the league just for the, the conference or the one I played in. The, the, I think no, it's not. Which league is it? Is it the conference? Conference Prem. I think three teams are on. Really, at least like a a, a great run into the, end of the season. So, that's stuff you guys obviously get promoted. Um, but I think it'd be tough next year. But if you bring the right players in, I think I think I think you'll kick on and. It'd be great seeing you in Premier League one one day. Maybe me and uh, local pundit can uh, get to Old Trafford and, and watch a game. Yeah, my guy, absolutely. Yeah, of course, Ben. Um, and that uh, I got about I got about five or seven minutes left. We'll see because I, I have to. Uh, <coughs> Ivan, I know you jumping in there. I don't know if you heard uh, Greg's uh, question about uh, going next, and then we're going to head up to what do you think? He asked a question about like what do you think we need for next year? Uh, we're just kind of staying surface, and uh, but yeah, but uh, what do you? I don't know if you caught that. Well, first of all, hello, Greg, and uh, everybody else. Great to have you here. Uh, great to uh, listen to you talk. You obviously know your stuff, and it's amazing to learn from somebody like you. Um, look, I uh, my answer to that would be it really depends on what kind of a target we have. What are we going to be doing next season? Are we there to just to survive, be happy in mid table, maybe lower mid table, or we try to push on to maybe play you know playoff spots? So um, I, I agree with Ken, uh, those players that he listed, I counted the, those players in my head before. And if we are going to be fighting for something, uh, we only have about 10 players who are, uh, let's say, um, on par, who are up to scratch to stay in League One and push on to the next uh, uh, competitive season and um, eventual promotion. Uh, but we obviously are limited by... Um, uh, the amount of uh, money we can spend, we're um, we're limited by other factors that are enforced by the league. Um, so I, I think that um, the the lineup that we we had uh, up on the pitch today, minus Palmer, unfortunately, um, and the subs that we had on, probably minus Davies, unfortunately, that's probably all we got. And then from there on, uh, we have just depth squad players. Uh, we need uh, at least at least one better two uh, strong midfielders, at least two def- defenders, and another um, and another um, strong striker. So four or five people, mm-hmm. uh, and each line needs re- reinforcing. But that again, it's a very broad kind of an answer because we have to define the parameters. We have to define the expectations. Like what are we doing in that league? If we just if we're just surviving and slowly building the squad and maybe involving some youth and building for the future, taking sort of more organic approach, then the team that we have right now will survive. I have no doubt. Uh, but we just have to, I guess it's up to the management, up to the uh, bosses of the club to decide how fast they want to go. I, I think I, I get, Longstaff keeps coming up in the chat here. I'd love to get a Longstaff, you know, have them come. And, I mean, that's that's a real possibility, pay some money for them. You know, me, uh, I think we need to keep AO for sure. Um, you know, uh, the big striker up, up top, he doesn't play he plays big and little guy you know ken i know we said that he plays big and little all the time like he mentioned there too um you need a big for him and have a jm so um but like someone in the middle like long staff would be great uh a left i think you know mclean is good left wing back but he's 34 years old he's fit as fries but like we need a left wing back that can cover mendy seems to be good but not league one maybe so maybe i'd say three or four players but it's gonna be a massive clear out this is a massive clear out and uh you know, it's uh, it's going to be very interesting. Uh, Hip Karma. Uh, so uh, Alpine Newt says, uh, "Play gives." I, I I should have considered that. Not entirely sure what the case is, but working. Sorry, I missed the question on that. This mm-hmm. is it. Sorry, Hip Karma says, "I wonder about Longstaff. If he actually be fit uh, for a locker room in an interview, someone said Longstaff plays only for the shot at goal rather than doing yeoman's work as most does." Um, uh, 
Ken Mulse, what do you or what you you know someone to go ahead. Yeah, I mean, Moles is, Moles is definitely good enough for League One. I think what we'll see next year is we'll acquire a site for an academy to build a big, a proper training facility. That probably won't get built till, say, 2026, um, you know, but and that's all part of the, the bigger strategic plan. And what you've got to remember is these, like, Ryan and Rob didn't go into this with a very narrow mind. They have mm -hmm. thought about the whole picture. This is a 10-year plan. There's going to be... A training facility that's fit for all men's women's juniors it's going to then you know start feeding because we have to become an attraction club where people want to go i want to play for wrexham at mm -hmm. eight nine ten years old and then build that academy look over here in australia the barker academy so barcelona literally is literally um has its fingers all across the country and people try and get in these these training facilities and then what happens is you know Wrexham becomes a team that's you know in the champion when it gets to championship level then then young players go I want to go play for Wrexham and what young 10 year old 11 12 year old right now wouldn't want to say I want to play for Deadpool yeah well, you know, well, I, that's, I think that's part of it too um and, and Ruby I, I apologize I have to uh I got I have to I yeah, you know, myself too, but I could go on for hours, or else I would get in trouble. I would get the I, there's a doghouse here for sure. Um, but uh, let's wrap. I'll, I'll wrap it up go around the horn, and Ivan, I just came. I'll we'll start with Ruby. Um, uh, thoughts on the day, everything, and we'll have a show tomorrow for sure because we, we're live every day. I'm the local pundit, so get involved. Um, you know, what do you think, Ruby? Last last words for you. Right, Ruby it's, out. It's fucking magic up the town. <laughs> oh God. Okay, and on that bombshell, there you go. <laughs> I'll see you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. All right. Bye. Um, Ken, good man. Mm -hmm. Good idea. Yeah. Fantastic. What a great night. Like great call, guys. Great to see the watch along just go off. I, that was like hundred. I don't know, hundred and what followers. Yeah, yeah we had, a, we had our four hundred. Uh, Greg, we had our biggest day today for the for the for the channel, the club, everything. We had a, a lot of fun today. So. Yeah, there's a lot of good, a lot of good. Uh, Ken and Ken, you know, we had, you know, wish you could come out, you know, wish you were on. You're probably sleeping, but yeah. <laughs> Ken, uh, oh, look, I know I was up, but I thought I won't get involved. You had you had yourself, Ivan and Sheldon. It was a really good balance, and I thought that was perfect. You know, you did really well. I think, the, you know, I mean, the difference from last night to Josh's first show where he got, got on and talked to himself, um, you know, it's been, a, it's been a small progression. Um, so it's great to see. It's only going to grow. Yeah. Let's... Bring on these last couple of matches, see what happens. Lots to talk about in the off-season. I think it's going to be fantastic. Let's go, guys. Uh, awesome. Good to see you, man. Uh, do we have a Discord? Uh, yeah, we can talk more. I'll, I'll drop it in there, too. Ken, it's great to see you. Uh, and I, I love the whiskey in the morning. But uh, we, well, you're, I'll see you tomorrow for sure, yeah? Yeah. All right, brother. Later. Uh, uh, Greg, uh, I'll, uh, I'll drop it in the Discord for you. I'll drop it in the chat uh, for you to get your last, that your thought, get your last thoughts in there real quick. On the day, nice, mate. even though you had, even though you had a long day, I mean, I mean, kid, you done the omens work, and you got you got baby duty now, right? Yep, I've got the uh, I've got the monitor right next to me here, so she's not woke up, so that's good. Um, last two nights she's been good sleeping, so um, we, we, we were we were away on vacation um, <laughs> last week. Well, the week just gone, and she was she was like Chucky from the movies at eleven p.m. just running around off her head, so. Um, but now we're home, so it's good. Uh, but, uh, it's good to have you on. You always, obviously, show what we talk all the time, man. If you want to get involved more? I mean, just let me know. We can talk. All, you know, we'll talk. But um, it's a good day for us. United. What I mean, I missed. All, I'm going to watch the shows probably when I go to bed tonight. Uh, so I'm looking forward to see what you guys did on on the, on the United stand, man. It was. Let's not talk about it. I think. I think. I think Beth, Faz, and even Mods were like, today could be a tough one, and. Like Bournemouth have been on a good run, so yeah. they're all going to be a tough, tough game. But we're yeah. just terrible right now, so changes yeah. in the summer need to happen. So yeah, but yeah, again, congratulations to you guys. Um, can't wait to see you next season. See what you guys do, and you want a you're really good trajectory. So obviously, you got to keep that. And um, like I said, I'll be here if, if I can get on. Yeah. You're here in, on the evening, so especially late. So I think uh, I, I'll be able to get on most nights um, if you awesome. want me on. So yeah. Love, love to have you on, man. You're, you're, you're a great guy. We've been talking a lot, which is awesome. And congrats to what you guys are doing on, on United States. It's a big, and uh, I'd say this, uh, I like, I love Faz. He's great. Mark's 
fantastic. Uh, you know, one of the uh, guys that inspired me to do this. Uh, I, I'll say this too. Beth uh, has 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 grown into someone really impressive, uh, and she's doing great work. So, uh, put yeah. that out there for you guys. But you too, man, producing that show. So, congratulations to you guys, man. Appreciate it, mate. Thank you. All right, mate. All right, Craig. We'll talk to you soon. Yeah, and Discord's in the chat too, if you want. It. All right, brother. Cheers, yeah, mate. Thank, thank you very you. much. See you later, guys. Uh, that's Greg from the United Stand. He produces the United Stand. Uh, Ruby Subject is great input, everyone. Thank you for sharing. Ivan, uh, good to see you, brother. We had a long day, a long day, but I wanted to uh, get you last, get you last in here, um, and last outs. Uh, we'll, you know, go on. <laughs> Look, man, what a day. I mean, you're, uh, you pulled a real shift here. Uh, I was just sporadic in and out, but what a, what a good conversation. I think everybody just takes that, a holistic approach now to what had happened it will take a while to settle in but look it's a it's a qualitative uh step uh step up and uh we need to be ready for from now from now on we need to be ready for um a relatively bumpy road and uh but the um the fact that today is such a milestone and such an achievement we just absorb the moment live in that moment remember these times they are the good times and uh whatever tomorrow brings we'll uh, we'll deal with that absolutely uh and yes he's wearing a schmedium vincente he's wearing a schmedium it's an extra large <laughs> get out of here all right brother good show man good show good stuff and congrats man uh go spend time with the fam and uh, i'll catch up with you later on all right see you later all right brother that is ivan our guy ivan and uh vincente there ken 100 vincente knows absolutely uh fun show fun day great stuff good to have greg uh, ken and ruby on fantastic uh we did you know wreck some reaction tonight uh we'll we'll dive back into it tomorrow do another show tomorrow we're gonna pick the bones out of it again a little bit more this is fun uh you know we're enjoy it today this uh, one enjoy it and uh this is one that uh for the record books is i've had, i've never had more much more fun doing this and watching what happened today with all you great people meeting these great great people and having people on like outside of this outside of the grounds and doing what they're doing uh daz and stace and um so um awesome a really good thing also last note before i get to the pundit stuff uh matt at the at the race course ramble is running in his uh, marathon tomorrow so go su uh, support him um so we'll keep an eye on that so good luck to you matt uh so thank you all very much Drop a like on the video, get involved in the Discord, uh, subscribe if you haven't, share with everybody, your friends, uh, and also, you know, um, uh, also, thanks, Hip Karma. Uh, thanks, everyone, and up to town, Hip Karma. Uh, Greg, appreciate that. Keep on what you're doing. Thanks, thanks, mate. I appreciate it. Um, everyone's inspiring uh, to me, so uh, thank you all so much. Yeah, get involved, man. Uh, let's let's do this, and we're, we're growing, and we're having good fun. Uh, we got over 600 today. Go to 1,000. It's, it's about the community, and it's about us going up. Back-to-back -back promotion today, 6-0 victory, Un insane. Uh, John says, cheers, Josh. Go UConn. Yep, absolutely, and go Wrexham. So on that bombshell, I'll see you all soon.